For this video, we are using an image and vector rig. They're very simple. Each are made of only three bones and each represent one arm. We're going to go through and apply different rigging techniques. So that way we can see the differences and see the pros and cons of each design. And we'll start with the vector. So if we click on the vector bone here and we come over here and grab the manipulate bones tool, you'll see that we have clouds surrounding each bone. These are referred to as bone strength, and by default, this is how you're going to control your rig. So if we don't do anything at all other than draw out these bones, and we come in here and we click and start moving around, you'll see that it looks very bendy. However, nothing looks quite right. But don't get discouraged. We haven't done anything to this yet other than just draw some bones. Let's take a look at the image rig next. So if we click on image and come in, you can see that it's reacting much differently. We don't even have the hand falling along. We just have this one image bending a little bit like so. So when it comes to rigging, you'll probably want to go and do something a little bit different just to get more accurate results. And the first step on the list is probably to link your bones. Linking bones is the quickest and easiest way to tell Moho what to do with these layers. Let's start with the vector arm first. So I'll click on the top layer for this, which is the hand. And I want to come over here and click on the select bone tool. With the select bone tool, I'm just going to click once on the hand bone. And with the hand layer still selected, come up to the top and choose to link bones. Then you have your arm. And we're just going to come in and select both bones that should make up that arm and link them up. Now for the image rig, come over here to your hand. And with that, we're just going to choose to link bones. And then for the arm, select those arm bones and then choose to link bones. Now let's go back to the vector first and grab the manipulate bone tool. And if we come in here and start to move this around, you can see that we have some different results occurring here. Now, we still have something that's not quite representative of what we want, but it is acting a little bit differently. And even if you were to adjust your bone strength, you might find that there's still going to be some issues. So you can see if I adjust the bone strength here and come in and work with this, it might start to bend a little bit better, but still not quite where we want it. If we grab the image and start to move this around, you can see that we have something that represents something a little bit more like how we would want to see something move, but it could still use some work. And we could of course work on this a number of different ways, but that's what we're looking at right now. And of course, if you were to come in and play with the bone strength, you could adjust this even more. Of course, more strength, you're going to have a different result coming in here. You can make those adjustments if you thought it was necessary. So the next method is to bind your points. And binding points is a great way to work with your vectors and probably the most efficient. So we're going to start on the hand for the vector. And we have what's down here called the bind points tool or I on the keyboard. And when we select this, you'll also see that we have different colored bones now, which can be useful for binding points. First, hold an alt and click on the hand bone because that's the bone we want to bind. And then we want to select all of the points that we want to go with this bone. In this case, it's going to be all of them since we only have one bone for the hand and the hand is what we're on. So we're just going to lasso around these points or you could use control A or command A if you want to select them all. And then at the top, you can choose to bind points. When you bind, you'll see that those points turn the same color as the bone, giving you a good visual representation of what's being bound. Now we can come to the arm. And we have to break this down into two steps. First, we want to alt click on the top bone and then lasso around just like this, selecting the points for the top portion of the arm and then choose to bind. Alt click on the green bone and we're just going to do the same thing. Come in, select all the forearm points, and then choose to bind points. 
Now you're going to find when we come over here to the image, we don't actually have the ability to select bind points. And that's because we don't have any points to work with when it comes to directly working with an image. Now, if you decide to apply a smart warp mesh to an image, then you could apply bones and you could bind the bones to the points on the mesh and manipulate the image that way. But by default, we can't do that. So we're just going to come back here to the vector and see how this plays out. We're gonna grab the manipulate bone tool and come in here. And you can see now that we're starting to get something that looks a little bit more close to what we want. Now, in this case, we could come in here and fix this little bend with smart actions. So whenever the arm goes up, in this case, the forearm, then we could have that get corrected so there isn't that sort of bunched up looking effect when the arm goes up. So this is on the right track. It just needs some more work after it. And again, the images don't benefit from this technique. The last technique is binding your layers. Binding layers allows you to lock any layer on your layers panel, it can be multiple layers, to one bone. So here, when it comes to the vector rig, using layer binding on the hand is a good idea. Point binding could work, and we did do that, but it's a little bit redundant to have to go through and select all those points when we could just come in and bind all those points to one layer just like that because the whole layer is now bound to that bone. Now for the arm, the way it's set up right now, this isn't going to work too well because the arm is on one layer. Now if you had perhaps the sleeve down to the elbow on one layer and then a second layer, you could try to bind those layers and then work with that. But even then it requires a little bit more setup, rounding off your edges to make sure that when you rotate from the bone, everything is going to look good. And that's what layer binding will do though. You can come in here and just layer bind this hand. So then when you go ahead and try to play with this, you can see here that we can move this around like that. Now, ultimately the best thing to do, and you can see we're already kind of doing it here, is to combine the techniques. So in the case of setting something up, you might want to bind the hand with a layer bind. Then you might want to go in and do some point binding with your arm if it's a vector. And ultimately when it comes to images, if you only have two bones to worry about, you might find that doing a smooth joint pair which we've shown in a previous video. If we go up to bone and then choose create smooth joint for bone pair with that arm image layer selected, that is a good option as well. So you could layer bind the hand and then we come in here and we have a nice little bend then for the arm with those two bones set up like that. So there you go. That's a little bit about the differences between setting up your image and vector rigs.